So somebody gives something away to set this thing free. But what about the thing that needs to be set free? What do we know about it? Sin. Sin is connected to the uh, to the idea I'm thinking of. Yes. Flesh. Flesh. Okay. Who needs to be set free? Who needs to be set free? Who needs to be set free? Let's see here. Aaron says God. Does, is God is God captive or can God God can do everything he wants to do, right? He can do everything he wants to do. So God doesn't need to be set free, right? Who who needs to be set free? Jasmine? Jesus. Jesus? Why does Jesus need to be set free? Is he is he like stuck somewhere and can't do what he wants to do? You think so? I don't think Jesus can do everything he wants to do. Jesus is God. Yes. So he has all power. He can do everything, anything that he wants to do. Uh, Ian? Uh, Israelites. The Israelites. They needed to be set free. What, what, why, when did they need to be set free? What was, what, where were they and they needed to be set free? Jasmine? They were doing what the king said, and, and he wanted them to build some big cities for them. That's right. If they did it, they would get whipped. Because they were, what's the one word? They were, there's a certain word. They were slaves. That's right. And when you're a slave, can you do anything that you want? No! Uh, really, sometimes you get to do the things you want. But only because your owner or your master lets you. If the master says you can't do it, can you do it? No. If the master says you have a little free time, do what you want, well, then you can do certain things. But you can't leave, can you? You can't decide I'm not working for you anymore, can you? You are under the control of somebody else. When you are under the control of somebody else, you're a slave. When you're under the control of somebody else, you're a slave. And you need, if you want to get out from that slavery, you're going to have to be, in one way or another, redeemed. You have to be, somebody has to pay so that you can be set free, right? Set, so set free by paying a price. Now, where was I going? So, the Bible teaches us that every single one of us are slaves. Now you think you're the child of your parent or something like that, and that's true. And nobody comes along, no person comes along and says, okay, 
now you shine my shoes or you make my breakfast or something like that. But inside you, Ian and Jeffrey, listen up. Inside your mind, in your heart, there's temptations to do right and to do wrong. Right? There is. Things come up and you think, oh, I know I shouldn't do that. And then pretty soon you end up doing something that you know you shouldn't have done. And it's almost like you didn't have any control. You always do the things that are wrong. Every once in a while you do some things that you enjoy. But other times it seems like you enjoy it and then it's awful. You did something mean to somebody and in when you did it, you were like, yeah, I'm such a great person. I can do whatever I want. But later on, you felt bad, and you should have felt bad about that, because you were mean. You were unkind, and the Bible teaches us that we should be kind. Other people, now you guys probably are, hopefully, you're too young for this. But there's people older than you, and they're all around us. Even in high school, they, they start messing around with something that they think will be fun like drinking beer. That seems like that would be fun to some people. But after a while, you can't stop drinking beer. Well, who's, are, you, are you under your own control or are you under the beer's control? The beer has control over you. And then you drink so much at one time that you really don't know what you're doing, do you? You're drunk and you go and do things that you never thought you would do. Who's in control there? You or the or the beer? You. You're responsible, but you're not in control. You're a slave to that beer. You don't ever want to drink beer. Don't ever drink beer. Or somebody says, hey, if you take this, smoke this, or sniff on this, or take this pill, you will feel really good. What are they talking about? Drugs. That's right. And you think you'll feel really good when you take that? You will. The first time, you will. It'll feel good. You'll be like, wow. But after a while, you'll think, I need some more of that. And I need more of it and more of it until every day you need some. And sometimes more than every day, more than once a day you're taking. And then you can't live without those drugs. Who's in control then? Are you in control? The drugs, are. the drugs are in control. So, and it's not just drugs and beer. Sometimes it's talking mean about people. Some of us just like to always make other people look bad so that we look good. Whenever we hear about someone, even if they're a friend, we always say something just a, a little bit so that they don't look as good as we do. What's that? That's pride. That's pride and that's gossip. And sometimes we will say something and people will think highly of us and we'll like that. We like that people like us. So we might say something again some other time about somebody else and the people that we're talking to, they think we're great and whatever. And we keep doing that and pretty soon we can't talk about anybody else kindly all we can do is talk about something. Whenever we're talking about other people, we're always putting them down. And we're always lifting ourselves up. And that's pride. And who's in control then? We're the one doing it. But that sin is in control of us. And so if something is in control of us, and the Bible tells us that every one of us is under the control of Satan, the flesh, and sin... If something is in control of us, what do we need? What we need God. What do we need God to do? What do we need God to do? If we're under the control, we're a slave to sin because it's controlling us. We need God's redemption, don't we? We need to be set free from that sin. We need something else to come along and make it break the chains of pride and of any other sin so that it can no longer control us. Now, you remember last week we talked about how the, how the Israelites were in Egypt 
and they had, where's my picture? They had a special ceremony where they killed a lamb, and they caught the blood, and they put it over the post of the door, right? Because God had said, every single firstborn in the land is mine. I'm going to kill them unless you kill a lamb in its place. It's almost like God said, it's mine, but if you let the lamb pay the price, I'll accept the lamb instead of the firstborn, right? And so the Israelites, they took the lamb and they put the blood over the door and they had their special meal. And when God passed through the land, all the firstborn in the land were killed. They died except for those in the house with the blood over the door. Now, God has provided something else for us. He was born at Christmas time. And the Bible calls him the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Who's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world? What's his name? What's the name of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Jasmine? Jesus! Jesus was born at Christmas time, and he lived 33, 34 years, and then he was killed. They shed his blood. He was killed. Did he do anything wrong? No. Did the Lamb do anything wrong? No. But Jesus was killed, and they put him on a cross, and they shed his blood, and so that anybody who believes in him can be free from their sin. They can be redeemed. Now, i got a question for you. Let's say we lived way back in Egypt, and we were Israelites. And let's say all of us are the firstborn sons. Okay, now there's a bunch of girls here, but we're just going to say we're all the firstborn sons. And in our house, we know about what God said, and so we kill the lamb... And we put the blood over the door, but then we go out and about. We're not inside the house where God said we would be protected. We just go out, we go to the store, we go visit some friends, and the death angel comes through the land. What would happen if you're not in the house where the protection is? The blood was shed, the lamb was killed. But what would happen to you if you weren't where you were supposed to be? You would die. You would die. And it's kind of the same way with Jesus. Jesus died. He shed his blood. He paid the price. But if you're not, if you're not in Jesus, if you haven't believed on him, if you say, I'm just going to do whatever I want with my life. Jesus died. That takes care of everything. It doesn't matter what I do. It does matter what we do. If you don't turn from your sin and believe on Jesus, then you're not a part of him. You're not a part of his family. And you won't be redeemed. You aren't redeemed. You won't have your sins forgiven. And what happens to people who are slaves to sin? When they die, where do they go? They go to hell. Satan hates God. He rebelled against God, and he decided he didn't want anything to do with God. And God said, that's kind of, he kind of said, that's fine, but you're going to be condemned to hell. And so Satan wants to get as many people as he can to come with him to hell. Satan is evil, and he's wicked. Why would anybody want other people to go to hell? But Satan, the devil, wants other people to go to hell with him. And so he tries to make people stay in their sin. He, he makes it feel like sin is fun. And didn't I say, sometimes sin is fun, isn't it? But once we keep doing that sin, then we never want to leave it. And then it's no fun. It's not even fun here on earth. And where does sin take us? It takes us to hell. And so everybody, everybody in the whole world is on their way to hell. They're slaves to sin. And Satan, Jesus paid the price on the cross. So that everybody can be free, but is everybody free from sin? No. no. Only those who turn from their sin, only those who say, I don't want to sin anymore. Now, if we're here on this earth, we're going to do things that are wrong, even after we believed on Jesus. 
But we have to not want to do that sin. We have to turn from our sin and say, I don't want to do that. I believe on Jesus. Jesus paid the price for my sin. I'm going to trust him to forgive my sin. And I want to follow him in everything that I do for the rest of my life. When we do that, Jesus, God, forgives our sins. He gives us eternal life. He, that makes us able to talk to him when we pray and fellowship with him and understand what he tells us in the Bible. And, um, and, and it gives us fellowship with him and gives us eternal life. And that happens when we are saved. And he frees us, forgives us of our sins, right? And then we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He forgives our sins and gives us the Holy Spirit who makes it so we don't have to sin. Will sin come along and say, this would be fun? It will still. But do we have to sin if we have Jesus living in us and the Holy Spirit helping us? We don't. But if we don't have the Holy Spirit helping us, if we haven't believed on Jesus, He doesn't help us. He's not our helper against sin. And so we're slaves to sin. So every one of us is, a, is born a slave to sin. Now we, it's something that's in our mind and our heart. Nobody has chains on us. But let's imagine, let's imagine that you did have chains on you. Let's imagine that you were a slave. You had cuffs on your hand and chain just long enough to kind of walk on your feet. And those were chained to another person who was a slave, a prisoner. And we finally got all of us, we're to a certain place. And they got a block up there, and they lifted you up and put you up on the block. And somebody said, who wants this person? And other people came along, and they maybe poked your side, just feel your arms. How strong are you? How, how strong are your legs? We're going to just ask you questions. Do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do that? To decide whether they want to buy you or not? No. That would be awful, wouldn't it? What if somebody came along and said, I'm going to buy you, but as soon as I buy you, I'm going to set you free. And you can do whatever you want. You're no longer going to have to do what other people tell you to do. That would be special, wouldn't it? And he paid the price for you. You went to him. And he took the cuffs off your hands and your legs. And he let, set you free to do whatever you wanted to do. If you saw him in the street later on and he said, hey, would you do something for me? Do you think you would do that for him? No. He's the one that set you free, isn't he? If he came to you later on and said, it would really be a good thing for you, for me, if you would do this, you would have been a slave, but now you're not. But he asks you to do something for you, for him. Do you think you would do that? We would. And that's how it is with Jesus. Jesus did set us free. Jesus, what price did Jesus pay so that we are free? He died on the cross. He gave his life. He gave his life so that we could be free. And what does Jesus ask us to do now? Does he, ask, does he say, you're free, go sin as much as you want. Does Jesus say that? No. He says, you're free, just go do whatever you want. Does he say that? No. He wants us to do stuff for him, but he won't make us. Right? He set us free, and then he says, now I want you to do this. And everybody who's been set from Je free by Jesus need, should go and do what Jesus wants them to do. What are some things that Jesus wants us to do? What are some things that Jesus wants us to do? Tori? Believe in him, but if we believe, yes. And we believe on him. He redeems us, sets us free from our sin. What are some other things that Jesus wants us to do? Jasmine? Make, uh, make, him, make us believe in him. We, uh, I'm saying, once we already believe in him, oh. we do believe in him. He wants us to, but we believe in him. And when we believe in him, he sets us free from sin. He gives us the Holy Spirit, and now we don't have to do those bad things anymore. And we can do what we want. What does he want us to do? You think he would want us to let other people know yeah. about him? Yeah. You think he would want us to tell other people, you know what? 
you could be free from your sin. Yes. Yeah, he would. We should do that, shouldn't we? You think he would want us to um, be kind to, to everyone around us? Yeah. So if you ever went to somebody and said, you know what? Jesus died on the cross so you could be free from your sin. What would they say? A lot of people might say, I'm not that bad a sinner, wouldn't they? If I told you or you're a sinner, I don't like to hear that I'm a sinner. I might say, well, I'm a sinner, but it's not that bad. You know what the Bible says about our sin? The Bible says that our sins, even, in fact, the Bible says even the good things we do. You might go to somebody and, and tell them, Jesus saved me, and he wants everybody to be saved. And they might say, well, I do every, every once in a while I do some things wrong, but I'm not that bad. I do some pretty good things. You know what the Bible says about the good things we do? In Isaiah, the Bible says that the good things we do are like filthy rags. Because God is so holy and so perfect, even the good things we do are not clean in God's sight. And we have to have our sins forgiven. We have to have our sins paid for. Another way the Bible talks about it is we have to have our sins forgiven washed away, and all of that, sins forgiven, sins paid for, sins washed away, all of that happens when we believe on Jesus, when we turn from our sin and believe on Him, He forgives our sins, gives us eternal life, allows us to fellowship with God, He sets us free from sin, because He's already paid the price, and like I said before, just because he's paid the price doesn't mean everybody's free. Just because uh, a lamb was killed and there was blood over the door, if you weren't inside, you would die. You have to be inside. You have to be, you have to be, you could say, oh, that was done, but I don't really believe it. I think I can do whatever I want. If you look at Jesus and say, yeah, he, he died on the cross, but I don't think I need it. I can do, I can still do whatever I want. You're going to be under the punishment of God. But when you turn to God and believe, you say, oh, yeah, he died for my sin. I need to believe on him. I need to, and, and since he's forgiven my sin, I want to do what he wants me to do. Then you are delivered from sin and delivered from the punishment of sin and everything else that goes along with sin. We're redeemed when we believe on Jesus. All right, next week we will start learning some more things about the people in, they're not in Egypt anymore though, are they? They're out of Egypt. Where are they going to go? They're in the wilderness. How are they going to be taken care of? Where are they going to find food? Water. Okay.